pressure on the waistline waterway. Intention is to get to the underneath of the blue barrel sink. I'm trying it with a wetsuit this time. Um, it's pretty cold. And uh, as I say, I'm just curious as to whether it's been uh, entirely filled from above because of the farmer's field, or whether we still have open passage. There's water flow, so I suspect there's open passage. Let's have a look. So the wetsuit's definitely an improvement on last week. Just slipping along through the mud. Don't have as much pain on the knees. Um, so I'm trying to stay on the higher side of the tunnel. Try and keep as much out of the water as possible even though I'm wearing a wetsuit. It's still not exactly comfy. Um, moving along, you can still see the raccoon footprints all along the sides here. So this is the, uh, the raccoon's turn off here. Seems to be this is where they all head off on the side passage, heading up to who knows where. Uh, kind of a, a muddy little little section of the tunnel. Uh, from here on, we're into the water. You can see, I've just passed a little turn off where all the raccoons seem to be going. I don't think they go beyond this. Um, starting to go into the water, and it gets deeper as you go. And I'm going to reach a point where I'm probably not going to be able to film because your, your head is up against the roof. you got to kind of pick your route. But it's challenging. And I'm okay with the challenge. I like that. I mean, where else in Ontario can you do this kind of thing? You should call it virgin exploration. Admittedly, I've been down this tunnel before. But I think Jeff and I are the only ones who have. So, I'm getting cold, so I need to keep moving here. Let's see. This is the situation now. We're in the water. Kind of neat in a way. I mean, definitely dissuades anyone else from coming down this way unless you're right into the caving idea. So, but, oh, I don't know how long this flashlight's going to last. And it's not meant for water and I've dipped it under a couple of times. So, anyway. So, pretty close to the roof at this point. We can move along and see how I slide. Like, ooh. Where else sink at this point? It's starting to get a bit muddy. As you can see, I'm kind of like a mud puppy. Um, getting used to the cold. Uh, just don't know how long my lighting's going to last. Uh, I know the, the headlamp's okay. It's my other one that I use for filming. I made it. This is the blue barrel sink. The stench is quite appalling here. You can see some more fuzz. Um, just a lot of raccoon footprints. I don't know how they're getting in again. Maybe they swam the, the distance here. Uh, used to be some massive spiders up above. I'm just going to have a look up the, up the actual sinkhole and see how they've actually uh, blocked it off. So there we go. Blocked off with dirt and filth. So through here, we end up with a the crawl. Um, not exactly. This is a crawl back. Quite a crawl now. Uh, ooh, what a smell. Nasty smell. <laughs> so, I'm heading back shortly here. Um, kind of pleased I reached this and real pleased to see it's not blocked off. A lot of driftwood, check that out. That's driftwood, big chunks of driftwood made it quite deep into this, into the cave itself. Um, a lot of scalloping along the walls. You can tell there's a scallop there. slide in the mud and really slither along. It's just a fantastic spot. Um, I just love it. And again, it's, it's our own cave that we found. Not ours per se. It belongs to nature, I guess. And we've never reached the end, but the intention would be to do that sometime soon. Look at that. Here's the tunnel. On my way back, having reached the blue barrel sink. Thank you. 